Hello YouTube, in this video we're actually going to be finding uh, polynomial products or actually multiplying polynomial functions. And so, so we go ahead and get started, but we're going to do this a lot like my last video in which we discussed polynomial sums and differences. We're going to do these uh, both in a horizontal fashion and a vertical fashion. So let's go ahead and start with uh, these two functions that I've got listed up here. We say f of x and g of x. You can see these f of x is a quadratic or a second degree polynomial and uh, g of x here is a first degree, first degree linear polynomial. So let's go ahead and find for our first example here, we're going to find f of x times g of x, the product of these two functions. So we're going to start by doing this horizontally. So writing these things out, it's important that when we do write these things out that we quantify them. So for example, when I say quantify them, put these in parentheses. That is f of x is negative x squared plus 2x plus 4. And we're taking this times g of x, which quantified in parentheses, looks like this. And so in order to find this product, actually what we're going to do is we're just going to use this method of exhausting everything on the left here. So for this left set of parentheses, we're just going to start with uh, negative x squared. And what's going to happen is we're actually going to distribute this negative x squared through the entire second set of parentheses until we can no longer distribute it. So we say negative x squared times a positive x would be negative. So we get negative. And x squared times x is x cubed. And so now we're going to take our negative x squared times this negative 3. A negative times a negative is a positive. And then x squared times 3 gives us 3x squared. So now that we're done with this negative x squared, we say it's exhausted. Let's go ahead and go over here to our 2x, which is the next thing in line. We're going to distribute our 2x through the second set of parentheses. So we say 2x times x, that is positive 2x squared. We say 2x times negative 3, well that's going to be negative, and 2x times 3 is 6x. So now our 2x is exhausted, we'll go on to the next term, which is our 4. So now 4 will distribute through the second set of parentheses. We say 4 times x, well that's 4x's. And then 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So really the method for doing this is just basically distributing everything on the left to everything on the right. And then we're just going to clean this up by combining like terms. So we say x cubed, there are no other x cubed terms, so this just gets carried down, negative x cubed. Say that's that's gone here. We say, okay, so x squareds, we have three of them here and two of them here for a grand total of five of these x squareds. So now those we can neglect. Uh, we say, okay, so negative six and positive four of these x things, this is negative two grand total of these x to the first things. And we say minus 12 is our constant. So this this third degree polynomial is the product of our quadratic and linear uh, polynomials up top. So let's go ahead and do this again, uh, except for this time we're going to stack these. We're going to find f of x times g of x. Now one thing I'd like to point out is this. Multiplication is very much commutative. That is, we could have done g of x times f of x just now and gotten the same thing. So uh, multiplying polynomial functions is commutative, just like multiplicate, you know, multiplying real numbers is commutative. Uh, that being said, when we do this vertically, when we stack these, it is actually really convenient to put the function that is, that is shorter uh, on the bottom. So when we take f of x times g of x, that is we say f of x times g of x. And I apologize for using this, this x symbol here to multiply. Uh, but essentially, uh, we're going to go ahead and quantify these things as we normally do. We say negative x squared plus 2x plus 4 is our f of x function. And then on the bottom here, we're going to say this is x minus 3. So now, just like when you multiply real numbers, we often, you know, we, we start, we start here on the right. And so we say 3 times 4, we get 12. Now we say 3 times 2x, we get 6x. So we have 6x plus 12. Uh, and, and this is a negative 3, pardon me. Ooh, so that makes a difference. I neglected to see that negative there. Point this out to you here. We have a negative. So negative 3 times a positive 4 is a negative 12. Negative 3 times a positive 2x is a negative 6x. And then negative 3 times a negative x squared is positive. Uh, 3x squared. So now that's our first set of multiplication there. We're actually going to move on now. We say our negative 3 is exhausted. Just like with real number multiplication, we're going to go over to the next thing here. We say is an x. So we say x. x times 4 is 4x. Now you notice I'm going to take my 4x. I'm going to stack it underneath this negative 6x because I want to line up my place values. Okay. We say x times 2x. That's 2x squared. So it's positive 2x squared. And then we say, okay, so x now times negative x squared is negative, negative x cubed. And so now we have this expression here that we can just sum. And you notice that we don't have any constant term on our second expression here. So when we add these, we're going to say this negative 12 plus 0 is negative 12. Uh, our x's, we have still x's, but how many? We say negative 6 plus positive 4 gives us negative 2 of those. 
As far as our x squares are concerned, we say we have a grand total of five of those. Three plus two is five. And then we say, okay, so we had zero x cubes on this top expression, but zero plus negative one is negative one of these x cubed things. And you'll see that we got the same thing as we did when we had done this horizontally. So a lot of the times it's a matter of preference, and some of the time, you know, it's a matter of you've been asked to do it one way or the other, and that's the way you should do it. So before we depart from this video, I actually like to do one more example. And in this example, we're actually going to multiply three binomials together. This is often something you might see. So we'll just make this guy up here. We say like x plus three, x minus one, you know, x plus two. If I were asked to multiply several polynomials together, the, the method for doing so is this. We're actually going to start by multiplying together the first two binomials. And, and you know, in this case, binomials, when you multiply two binomials, we're going to FOIL. We say FOIL-wise, we say, all right, we want to quantify all this. We say x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x. 3 times x is uh, positive 3x. And then we say 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So really what I've got listed here is basically this. It's the product of the first two things right here um, in parentheses, okay, uh, times our x plus 2. So I'd like to clean this up a bit. That is, we could combine our like terms with our x to the first terms. And so we get this, we say, okay, so now I've got x squared uh, plus 2x's because our negative x and positive 3x may give us 2x, so we say minus 3. Now we're taking this times x plus 2, and this is very much like what we just saw. So uh, go ahead and start by distributing our first term through here. We say x squared times everything on the right. We get uh, x squared times x is x cubed, and then x squared times positive 2 is uh, positive 2x squared. So we've exhausted this. Let's go ahead and go to our next term in our first set of parentheses and, and distribute it, where we say uh, 2x times x is uh, another 2x squared here. 2x times 2 is 4x. So now that's toast. And we say, okay, so now let's distribute our negative 3. So negative 3 times x is negative, negative 3x. And then negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. So now cleaning this up, we say, well, we had x cubed, no other x cubed terms. Uh, 2x squared and 2x squared give us a grand total of uh, four of these x squareds, those two do. And then we say, okay, so x to the first, we have uh, four of them here and negative three of them there. So four minus three is one. So we say positive one x. That's what those give us. And they're gone. We say minus six. So this would be our product of those first three binomials up there. But uh, yeah, just a quick overview of how you would multiply polynomial functions.